Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about a fantasy action film called The Clash of Titans. Be ready for some spoilers ahead! A long time ago, powerful entities called Titans were masters of the universe, but their reign was soon ended by their children, who created the enormous monster known as the Kraken to defeat their parents. The victors began calling themselves gods, and their leader Zeus became the ruler of the heaven, but through trickery and deceit, his brother Hades was forced to reside and suffer in the underworld. As time passed, Zeus created man using his own image so that the mortals can worship the deities, giving the gods immortality and infinite powers. But the humans grew restless and began doubting their makers, eventually rising up against the heavens. Somewhere far away in the oceans, a fisherman finds a coffin floating in the waters and takes it on board, only to see the body of a woman and her newborn who is amazingly still alive. The man decides to raise the baby as one of his own, and eventually the boy becomes a young man called Perseus, who is also a fisherman just like his father. They journey towards the city of Argus and seize the enormous statue of Zeus, standing over the ocean in glory. But the old man soon realizes that something is wrong as an army of soldiers are breaking down the sculpture from its feet. The giant statue eventually falls down from the cliff and crashes into the waters, creating huge waves in the ocean as the soldiers celebrate in victory. However, the sky soon becomes darkened from the clouds and numerous flying creatures rush out from the ocean, charging towards the mortals who dare to insult their gods. The soldiers try to fight back, but they're clearly no match for the flying demons as they're quickly killed one by one. The creatures soon begin to fuse together as they clash into each other, eventually transforming into Hades himself. The deity notices the fisherman's boat and charges towards the helpless mortals, knocking the vessel into the oceans. Luckily, Perseus was able to escape from the attack, but his family is trapped inside the boat as it sinks even deeper into the waters. The man swims desperately towards his father, but fails to save anyone inside as he watches the family suffocate helplessly. With no other choice, Perseus is forced to escape towards the surface and grabs onto the wreckage as he cries in despair for his family's death. At the same time, Zeus has realized the mortal's defiance against the gods and becomes furious at the humans for betraying his love. Hades arrives onto Olympus as well and tries to convince his brother to take vengeance on humanity by allowing him to punish the people of Argus. Apollo advises against this as they need the humans prayers for their immortality, but Zeus agrees to the plan of his brother as he believes that humanity requires fear to be reminded of the god's love. On the other side, Perseus is rescued from the oceans by the soldiers of Argus and quickly taken into the city itself. The soldiers arrive inside the palace alongside Perseus and declares to King Cepheus that their mission against the gods was successful despite the heavy casualties. The people cheer in victory as they salute towards their king, while Cepheus assures everyone that a new era is coming, where gods will not control the destiny of man anymore. The king's daughter Andromeda warns them about their hubris, as she believes that there will be severe consequences for angering the gods, but her mother laughs at her worries as the woman thinks that they are the gods now. Suddenly, the lights inside the building begins to dim as a cloud of black smoke merges in the center of the room. The mysterious entity begins pulling all the soldiers towards itself and lifting the men into the air, consuming all the humans one by one as Perseus somehow manages to stay grounded. The giant cloud eventually reveals itself to be Hades, and the deity is intrigued by the man's ability to resist his power. Hades turns the attention towards the queen of Argus as he flies across the room, draining the life force away from the woman as she turns into a corpse within seconds. The deity tells the people that he'll unleash the kraken onto the city in 10 days when the sun will eclipse, unless they offer their princess to the monster as a sacrifice for offending the gods. Before Hades leaves, he purposely reveals that Perseus is actually the son of Zeus and the deity who is truly responsible for the upcoming disasters. The soldiers immediately take the main character hostage, and their leader Draco tortures Perseus, demanding to know how they can resolve this curse, but the man turns out to be clueless just like everyone else. However, Perseus is soon visited by a woman called Io, who seems to know everything about the man's past, confirming his identity as a demigod. Apparently before his birth, King Acritius tried to rebel against the gods by leading a siege onto Mount Olympus, but instead of destroying his army, Zeus chose to punish him in a 
more terrible way. The deity transformed into a Christius and decided to do some aggressive cuddling with the queen. When the king returns to her chambers, it was already too late, and the Christius orders the execution of his wife alongside the newborn infant of Zeus. Before the man can cast out the coffin, the deity strikes him with lightning that transforms the king into a hideous monster, tormenting him for eternity. Io tells Perseus that his power as a demigod makes him the perfect man to slay the kraken, and if the monster dies, Hades will also be weakened since the creature was made from the deity's body. Realizing that this is the only chance to take vengeance on his family's killer, Perseus decides to join the soldiers led by Draco. They plan to seek out the Stygian witches who has the knowledge for all things so that they can find a way to kill the kraken. On the other side, Hades decides to pay a visit to Acrisius, who's now an outcast that lives in the sewers of the city. He tells the men that the son of Zeus was able to survive after all these years and offers Acrisius to be his weapon of vengeance. Hades grants the man enormous power by breathing corruption into his body and promises to destroy Zeus if Acrisius kills the deity's son. Meanwhile, Perseus has arrived inside a forest alongside the soldiers and he quickly discovers an aura of glowing light that's calling for him. It turns out that Zeus has gifted him a magical weapon that's made from the heavens and the man is amazed by the power of the glowing sword, but he refuses to accept anything from the gods as it was the deities who caused his families to die. Very soon, Perseus encounters another extraordinary sight when he sees numerous horses with wings in front of him. Before he can admire the beauty of the animals, another giant horse with black wings lands behind the man and causes him to fall down in fear as the creature opens up its massive wings. Io appears from behind Perseus and explains that its name is Pegasus, a magical creature that is no doubt sent by the gods in order to help him destroy the kraken. However, their conversation is interrupted by a terrible scream from nearby which causes Perseus to run towards the soldiers only to see that Acrisius has easily killed two of his comrades. The monster begins attacking the main character and knocks him down the hills while chasing closely behind and running like a terrifying beast. The creature leaps into the air and crashes down with enormous power barely missing Perseus in the attack. The man tries to fight back using his sword, but the monster is too strong and bites Perseus right in the arm, causing him to scream in agony. Luckily, the man is able to break free as the other soldiers charge in to help, but they're quickly defeated by Acrisius and his unbearable strength. The monster turns the attention towards Perseus once again and grabs onto the man's head, but Draco manages to save the main character by chopping off the enemy's hand. Realizing that the creature is hurt, Perseus immediately chases after the monster alongside his men, but what they don't realize is that the hand that was cut off is quickly morphing into a terrifying scorpion. Very soon, one of the teams are able to ambush the enemy by knocking him down, but the man quickly realized that something is wrong as the grounds began shaking and claws appear from inside the sands, allowing Acrisius to escape. Giant scorpions begin to appear from below the ground, and the men are forced to fight for their lives as the monsters strike furiously at the soldiers. The warriors are quickly overwhelmed by the creatures as they're pierced by the scorpion's tail and sent flying across the field. While the monster is not looking, Draco takes the chance and jumps onto the giant scorpion, stabbing its back using both of his blades. One of his men throws the spear at Draco, allowing the warrior to use the weapon and stab it through the scorpion's body, finally killing one of the vicious creatures. At the same time, Percy Perseus tries attacking the giant monster furiously, but gets hit by the creature's claws and knocked onto the ground. The scorpion grabs onto the main character and smashes him onto a pillar, trying to kill the man by using its venomous tail, but Io is able to interfere before the final strike and cut off the creature's weapon. The scorpion quickly charges at the woman and tries to kill her, forcing Io inside a structure as the monster continues to attack viciously. Luckily, Perseus is able to save her in the last moment, and the two run desperately away from the place while the scorpion chases closely behind. Realizing that there's nowhere to run, the man throws Io away from the area and prepares to fight the creature all by himself. The giant scorpion launches at the man with all its might and crashes into the structures before landing on the grounds below. The people watch in shock as the creature has apparently devoured the demigod, but Perseus manages to break open from the scorpion's stomach and kill the monster at the same time. Before the people can celebrate their victory, other soldiers begin to run towards them as more scorpions appear from behind the hills, surrounding the team 
fighting with nowhere to escape. Just when the enemies are about to attack, the creatures become frozen in place as chantings can be heard from the far distance. Draco immediately recognizes the mysterious people as jinns, enemies that they fought numerous years ago, but Perseus believes that they're allies as they're responsible for stopping the monsters. On top of that, the jinns are quickly able to control the giant monsters, essentially domesticating them and turning them into transportations. Although hesitant at first, the soldiers quickly decide to trust the jinns as this is the only way to make the journey before the eclipse occurs. With the use of the scorpions, the party is able to travel across the lands effortlessly, finally arriving in the Garden of Stygia, home to the dangerous witches. The group makes it onto the mountain as the night begins to fall, eventually climbing onto the peak as they trek carefully towards the center. Very soon, three hideous creatures without eyes begin to appear in front of the people, and the witches know exactly what the warriors are looking for. The monsters demand payment for their knowledge and begins attacking the soldiers, but Perseus manages to steal their only eye and threatens that he'll destroy it unless the witches offer them a solution for killing the Kraken. With no other choice, the witches tell the demigod that only Medusa can slay the giant beast, as her gaze can turn anything that's flesh into stones. Satisfied with the answer, Perseus throws the eye onto the ground and plans to leave, but the witches tell him maniacally that he'll die in this journey no matter how much he tries. After hearing this unpleasant prophecy, many of the people chose to abandon the mission, leaving only the soldiers and the leader of the jinn, who desires to exact vengeance on the gods for banishing his people into the deserts. While heading down from the mountains, Perseus runs into a mysterious man who approaches him from the back, but soon finds out that the person is no other than Zeus himself. The deity tells Perseus that he's not going to defeat the Kraken nor take vengeance on Hades, as it was confirmed by the witch's prophecies. Zeus wants to offer protection for his son so that he may live in heaven alongside the other gods, but Perseus refuses immediately, choosing to live and die as a man instead. Not wanting to see his son fail, Zeus gives the man a golden coin so that he may travel safely to Medusa's lair as the place requires significant payment. After venturing across the lands, the group eventually arrives into a giant hole that resides inside the surface of the earth, where a ghostly river that is covered in fog appears in front of them. Perseus takes out the gold coin that was given to him by his father, and the gem throws the item into the water while chanting a spell, trying to bribe the ferryman to take them into the underworld. Very soon, numerous dead souls appear from the water while pulling a giant boat towards the group, and the sinister demon welcomes the people on board. They travel across the haunted river that's filled with melted rocks from the Earth's core, and the people eventually see a clearing as they finally reach their destination. The soldiers continue forwards onto a rocky field and finally reaches the entrance to Medusa's lair, where only men are able to enter as they leave Io behind to wait for their return. The warriors enter into the cave that's covered by lava, where countless statues of men are frozen in place, all victims to Medusa's power. They begin hearing a woman's maniacal laughter from far away, and realize that the monster must be nearby. Suddenly, multiple arrows are shot towards the soldiers, causing them to fall into the lava pits below, as Perseus tries desperately to hold on while saving the djinn in the process. Draco tells the warriors to quickly chase after Medusa in order to flank her, while Perseus manages to throw the djinn onto the surface and saving himself as well. The two soldiers try their best to avoid the demon's gaze while hunting her down, but are turned into statues very quickly as they fall onto the ground and gets broken into pieces. Perseus runs desperately alongside the djinn while trying to avoid the demon's arrows, hiding away from the huntress as she searches for her prey. He tells his companion to wait while he lures the monster out and charges quickly into the openings, causing Medusa to chase after him while trying to tear the man into pieces. Perseus continues to avoid the demon's attacks while Draco watches them from afar, trying to wait for the perfect time to ambush the creature. The warrior eventually lures the monster back to the djinn as he slashes at Medusa's head, but ultimately misses the target and quickly gets captured by her tail. The monster tries turning the djinn into stones, but surprisingly fails as the creature has no flesh on his body anymore. The djinn laughs at Medusa and decides to blow himself up, causing a huge explosion that knocks the monster away alongside Perseus. Before the creature can recover, Draco appears from above and jumps onto a giant rock on the ceiling, causing it to break apart and fall right on top of the monster's tail, trapping her on the ground. The demon looks back in anger and turns the man into a statue, giving Perseus the chance to aim for the creature's head through the reflections on the shield. Medusa launches forwards as the warrior leaps towards the monster as well, slashing furiously at the demon's neck while keeping his eyes closed. Perseus manages to cut right through the creature, causing Medusa's head to fall onto the ground as a result.
result. The man makes it out alive as the only survivor while carrying the demon's head, but only to see that Io is stabbed in the back by Acrisius and thrown onto the walls like a ragdoll. The warrior charges furiously at the killer and tries to avenge his friend, but quickly gets overpowered by the creature and knocked onto the ground. Perseus fights back viciously, managing to stab Acrisius on the leg, but he's no match for the enemy's strength and gets punched away like nothing. Seeing his friend lying on the ground about to die, Perseus decides to use the weapon of the gods and leaps into the air while striking the enemy, quickly turning the battle to his favor by forcing the monster backwards. Acrisius is quickly overwhelmed by the warrior's attacks and eventually gets stabbed in the stomach, changing the monster back to human once again as he falls down into the abyss. Perseus rushes back to Io and tries to save her before she dies, but the woman tells him to stop the Kraken instead and save the people of Argus before the eclipse. Io assures the man that everything will be alright before vanishing into nothingness as her body is turned into dust. Before the man can mourn for her death, he notices the Pegasus flying towards him from the sky, offering him a way to go back to Argus before the city is destroyed. As the eclipse approaches closer, the sea floors begin to open up, releasing a number of giant tentacles into the water waters, all rushing towards the city and creating huge waves in the oceans. The people realize that the monster is coming and ties the princess onto the platform, offering her as a sacrifice for the kraken so that everyone else can be spared. Giant tentacles launch out from the waters and smashes into the city with enormous power, destroying everything on the way as the people run for their lives. At the same time, the palace inside Olympus begins shaking violently, and Hades finally reveals to Zeus that he's tricked all the gods into making him stronger. Since the kraken Kraken is made from the body of Hades, destructions caused by the monster would only increase his power while making everyone else weaker. On the other side, Perseus flies closer towards the Kraken and plans to slay the beast, but Hades has noticed the demigod's presence and charges in to attack by turning into numerous demons. The creatures were able to steal the head of Medusa, while Perseus chases closely behind, eventually arriving into the city where the giant tentacles are killing all the innocent people. Perseus is able to shake off the demons that are pursuing him by knocking the creatures down while trying desperately to go after the Medusa's head. Very soon, the Kraken begins to emerge from the oceans and shows its massive body while roaring furiously at the people, as the princess cries hopelessly after witnessing the monstrosity. Perseus continues to pursue the flying demon and forces it into the air, while barely escaping the attack from the Kraken in the process. The warrior jumps down from his flying horse and is able to grab onto the creature, sending both of them crashing down into the buildings and landing right behind the princess. The Kraken closes in onto the woman and plans to devour her body in a single bite but Perseus manages to grab onto Medusa's head and runs towards the monster. The demigod takes out Medusa and shines her gaze onto the massive creature, causing the Kraken to slowly turn into stones as it screams in agony. The monster roars furiously as its body is slowly frozen in place, causing its massive arm to drop onto the buildings and killing everyone below. Andromeda falls down into the oceans and lands inside the waters, while the giant Kraken crumbles into pieces at the same time. Hades appears in front of Perseus and tries to take vengeance for killing his monster, but the demigod conjures lightning from the sky and throws the weapon at the enemy, causing a powerful shockwave that sends the evil deity back into the underworld. Perseus jumps into the water and swims quickly towards the princess, eventually managing to grab onto her hand and save her from being drowned, as both of them make it onto the beaches unharmed. Andromeda offers Perseus to be her husband for saving her life, but the man refuses as he has no desire to be a king in the future. After returning the princess to the people of Argus, Perseus gets a visit from Zeus once again. The deity rewards his son for saving the heavens by reviving Io back to life, allowing the warrior to live the rest of his life together with the woman that he loves. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.